Our third page of notes is going to be just a few more example problems. And one of those problems is the volume of a sphere, which we have not done yet. And remember, our volume of our sphere formula back from the first page was that the volume is going to be 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. So let's look over here and see what the radius would be. In the problem, it tells us our diameter of our sphere is 12 centimeters. So of course, that means that our radius is half of that, so our radius is 6. So as we plug in the numbers here, we've got volume is equal to 4 thirds times pi times 6 cubed. Doing a little bit of simplifying here, 6 cubed is 216. So we've got 4 thirds times 216 pi. And if we want to simplify that just a little bit more, let's take 4 thirds times 216, which would be 288 pi. And our unit on here would be cubed centimeters, because it is a volume. So that's a pretty straightforward problem. If you have the radius of the sphere, just plug it in. You do have to multiply that times 4 thirds after you've cubed the radius. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Now, number 6 is a little bit different type of problem. We're back to the volume of a prism, which isn't so bad, because we know that the volume of a prism is the area of the base times the height. Well. This prism base is a rectangle, and the base and the height of the rectangle, or the length and the width of the rectangle, are expressed as 2x plus 3 and 4y. So when we get the area of the base on this one, we're going to have to multiply those two together. So volume is equal to the area of the base, so 4y times 2x plus 3. Right here, so that is the area of the base, and then we're going to have to multiply that times the height, which is x over here. The height of the prism, I should say, is x. So this right here is the area of the base part, and then this right here is the height part of the formula. Well, looking at this, we're going to have to do a little bit of a distributive property first to simplify this. So you've got volume is equal to, all right, so 4y times 2x plus 3, start with taking 4y times 2x, would, which would be 8xy, and then 4y times 3 would be 12y. Right, so we got rid of that inside parentheses. We still have the parentheses on the outside here because we're going to have to multiply that times the height of the prism, which is x. And once again, we're going to do a little distributive property. We're going to have to take the 8xy times the x and then the 12y times the x if we we're going to multiply these two things together. So let's go ahead and do that. 8xy times x would be 8x squared y, and 12y times x would be 12xy. These are not like terms, so we cannot add them together. So our final volume expression will be what we have ended up with here. 8x squared y plus 12xy would be the expression for the volume of this right rectangular prism. If we wanted to know the actual volume, we would have to have numbers for the variables of x and y. Similar type of question in number 7, which volume is greater, a or b? And so we're going to have to go through the volume formulas with these expressions and see what we have. Now, the first one is a cylinder, and the cylinder is just that straightforward area of the base times the height formula, or volume. And we know that the area of a base of a cylinder is a circle, so pi r squared times the height. And actually, before I put step two there, since I'm not plugging in numbers, let's just go on now and see what we have here. All right, step two, let's actually plug in what we've got. So the area of the base, we've got pi times r squared. Well, the radius in this problem is 4x. So we've got pi times 4x squared. And then we've got the height, which is 8x. All right, we've got to be a little bit careful with our algebraic expression here. Now, 4x squared that quantity right there, 4x squared, means the 4 is being squared and the x is being squared. So this ends up being pi times 16x squared, right here. And we're going to multiply that times 8x. 
On this one, we actually don't need the parentheses anymore uh, because there's nothing being added or subtracted inside the parentheses. So I'm actually just going to erase the parentheses right here. We no longer need them. We can multiply a couple of these things still together, though. This is step three. So the volume is equal to pi times, all right, 16x squared times 8x. We can actually multiply those two together. We can multiply the 16 and the 8 together. So 16 times 8 would be 128. All right, so that's a number. We've got this pi kind of sitting on its own here. So let's put that pi there because that's not a variable. That's a number. So we should put it next to our number of 128. And then we have x squared times x. x squared times x would be x cubed. So our final expression for the volume of this one would be 128 pi x cubed. Let's see how it works out in the second of our shapes here, which is a cone. And we know the volume formula for a cone is just a little bit different. It's the area of the base times the height divided by three. Cones and pyramids have that divided by three in there. All right, so once again, the base is a circle, so pi r squared times the height divided by three. All right, let's start plugging in some numbers here. So this one, we've got a radius, which is, again, 6x. So it's this, no, it's not the same radius as the other one. I thought it was for a second there. But our radius is 6x, so pi r squared would be pi times 6x squared. And then times the height of 12x. A little scrunched on the side here, but this is 12x. And we're going to divide that by 3. All right, let me give myself a little more space this time as I simplify that. So we've got 6x squared, which would be 36x squared. So pi times 36x squared is that inside parentheses simplified. And then um, remember this over here was the height of our cone, which is 12x divided by 3. And let's see if we can multiply these together. So we've got the 36 times the 12 is 432. So that's the 36 right here. And I'm going to use a different color. So we're doing the whole numerator here. 36 times the 12. And once again, we don't really need these parentheses anymore because we're just multiplying everything. But there we've got 36 times 12. And we've got the pi in there. And... We also have x squared times x. So we've got pi x squared times x would be x cubed divided by 3. And we're almost there. 432 divided by 3 is 144. So 144 pi x cubed is the final volume expression for this one. So which one of these two are greater? Do we have the 128 pi x cubed or 144 pi x cubed? In fact, it is the 144 then, because all of the rest of the variables are the same. So that coefficient of 144 would make B the greater volume. All right, so really hitting some algebra here as we're finishing off this section. Finally, we have which volume is greater, A or B, show your work. So both of these are pyramids. So volume of a pyramid is the area of the base times height divided by 3. And... On this one, we know that the base is a triangle. Triangle is little b h divided by 2, base times height divided by 2. So we'll put that little formula in here. Let's plug in what we've got. Now, since this is a right triangle, the base and the height of that little triangle on the bottom right here would be the 3y and the 5x. So we can actually use that. So we've got 3y times 5x divided by 2 times the height of the pyramid, which is 2x. And then the whole thing is divided by 3. Whew, that's kind of an ugly looking expression at this point. Let's see if we can make it nicer. So 15, 3 times 5 is 15. So that's 15xy divided by 2 times the 2x, all divided by 3. Right, so 15 divided by 2 would be 
xy times 2x divided by 3. Now let's simplify. 7.5 times 2 would be 15. And then x times x would be x squared. And then we have the y. So that's 15 x squared y divided by 3. And finally, 15 divided by 3 is 5. So all of that simplifies to 5x squared y. That would be the expression for the volume of that first pyramid. Let's take a look at the second one. All right, we see some similar dimensions on the second one, but just in a little bit different order here. Let's see how that works. So once again, volume is the area of the base times height divided by 3. And this problem... Like we said before, the area of the base is that right triangle. So right triangle, or any triangle, base times height divided by 2 is the area formula for our triangle, times the height of our pyramid divided by 3. All right, let's plug in our... What's going on here? All right, let's plug in our terms. So let's see, base times height. So the base and the height of our triangle on the bottom of our pyramid here would be the 5x and the 2x, because those are uh, the two sides right here. This side right here is the 2x. There's that little arrow that's going to. So it kind of looks like it's the hypotenuse. It's not really the hypotenuse. The 2x is over here. All right, so the base and the height, we have 2x times 5x. All right, divided by 2, and then we've got the height of our pyramid is 3y, and then everything is divided by 3, which again, this looks kind of ugly to start off here. Let's see if we can make this look a little nicer. 2x times 5x would be 10x squared, so you got 10x squared divided by 2 times the 3y, all divided by 3, so this one becomes... 5x squared, 10 divided by 2 is 5, so 5x squared times 3y divided by 3. All right, so 5 times 3 is 15. x squared, and then the y divided by 3, and then 15 divided by 3 is 5, so 5x squared y. And take a look at those two volume expressions. In fact, both of these two pyramids have exactly the same volume. So they have the same volume, even though it looks a little bit different with the dimensions. When we go through the calculations, we find they have the same volume.